Ahoy! Oh, he's, he's stuck with Ahoy. I like it. It's a thing. It's going to be my thing. Ahoy. It's, it's a thing now. That's two episodes. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a thing. Uh, welcome to episode two of Bottom of the Stream, where we are talking about the hidden gems that are hidden at the bottom of Netflix. I'm Nick. I'm Adam. And we are Bottom of the Stream. <laughs> And uh, what have we got up today? We are talking about bait. It was randomly selected at the end of last week's episode. It is an Australian film about sharks. Yeah, I just thought I'd clarify. It's not the 2019 British film about uh, life in a Cornish fishing village. Is that called bait as well? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so no, it's definitely not that. Don't watch that. Well, do watch it. It might be brilliant. I don't know. But that's not what we're talking about. So. <laughs> Um, it's an Australian horror action thriller film from 2012. I think the thing with Australian films is you have to judge them on how many people have been in Home and Away. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I, I will say, actually, so I, I never watched Home and Away. I was much more of a neighbours person. No, but, um, it's, you've never been so wrong. My wife did come in halfway through this film and immediately spot three people that she recognised from Home and Away. So there's, out of, there's, I think there's 13 people in this film. All right. Six of them have been in Home and really? Away. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, there was one of my main things I was like well that guy definitely has because he was I recognised him instantly and then there was a girl I thought I think I've seen her in Home and Away and okay. it turns out that uh, then that prompted me to look for IMDb and it turns out there's six have they had to go back to Home and Away I don't think or so did Bait launch them I think Bait, a, Bait has launched their career yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Bait baby <laughs> This, we did this last week. Give me your one word review of bait. Wet. Wet. I like it. It doesn't really describe the film, but I'll go with it. I'm going to go with fun. I really, really enjoyed this film. Okay. I just thought it was fun. So there's been a... Since Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus, shark B-movies have become a real thing. And you I think, can't move for shark. <laughs> you can't shark move movies. for shark. Right. Shark movies are everywhere. And... I think Sharknado is the pinnacle of them. You're not getting any better than any of the Sharknado films. But there's there's an awful lot of shark B-movies out there. There's some bad ones. We've seen some bad ones. We've watched a lot of shark <laughs> shark movies over the last few years. Ranging vastly in quality. Yeah. So I tell you what, I, I when this came out of the um, random box, <laughs> I was thinking we were in for another sort of low budget, yeah. grindhouse-y type shark movie. But actually, this is pretty high sheen. Yeah, it's, relatively it's, high budget. It's, it's a proper film. It's a proper film. It is. It's not like some of the other terrible shark films out there. Um, and I think it was originally in three D. Was it really? Yeah, no, I didn't know that. So if you did happen to catch it in the cinema, <laughs> I wonder uh, if there's a, was, a DVD out there somewhere. I, and that was obvious in a few of the shots. Yeah, I think. Yeah, you're probably right. Actually, now you've said that. A few blood splatterings and like that awesome fishes. scene where that girl got that. Boat rudder into her head. Yes, I, I actually wrote that down. I was like, "That looks incredible." I was really happy with that. She what? Was she got like ninja star? Yeah, it was like ninja in star directly into her forehead. Yeah. It was brilliant. Slightly better than some of the other special effects. The effects of the tsunami hitting were not good. <laughs> yes, that was a bit all over the place. So, do you, do you just want to give a quick setup? What's the premise? The premise is a tsunami hits an Australian coastal town. Coastal town. Some people are being held up in a supermarket at exactly that same time. Uh, Julian Maman's in it. Yeah, he's famous. He's, he's famous. Yeah. Not so much famous now as he was probably in 2012, but he he plays somebody who's... I got the impression he was being blackmailed. Yeah, so he was he was being coerced into performing this robber, armed robbery of the supermarket. Of the supermarket. Seems a random thing to armed rob. But. Uh, yeah, and I don't think we ever really... Because more he thought more important things happened. You yeah, know, we we lost the, track. The of that supermarket was flooded with sharks. So yeah. um, so the tsunami hits the it, supermarket in the middle of this hold up. They all get stranded in there, and there's three sharks uh, in the supermarket. There's, there's two or three. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah. Maybe they didn't two. have names, did they? No. So, uh, yeah. So the motives for the robbery slightly go um, yeah. out of the window, and it doesn't really matter <laughs> because, like you say, it, it's it's pretty good fun. This one. It starts off pre-credits as probably the most Australian thing ever. It's the stereotype of the hungover jock lifeguard and his girl on the beach. She tells him he looks terrible and he absolutely does not look terrible. 
in the slightest. He's completely manicured and his hair's perfect and it, it doesn't look... T- she tells him twice, actually, and he didn't. <laughs> um, then you see some migrating birds, which is always a sign of impending doom from the sea because they're heading inland. Oh, I've got a couple of things like that. Yeah, so the animal... I've written it down. Oh, yeah, in my notes, I did actually write down... Um, the animals always know first. The animals There's always a couple know of first. howling dogs. I don't, I don't know if that's true in real life, but it's definitely a definitely a film trope. And so just for yeah, before the tsunami hits, this couple are uh, lifeguarding with another friend and he, he gets eaten by a shark, doesn't he? Hmm. And there's like this they go out and try to rescue him on their jet skis, which is where <laughs> it goes a bit baywatch. Not enough jet skis in films anymore. No, that's true. Uh, the main character, Josh, he tries to he tries to rescue his friend, but he doesn't get there in time, the shark gets him. And there's a real, like, platoon style, no! <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, that's kind that's of the level we're starting acting. with. And then 12 months later, tsunami. Here we go again. Yeah. It's just when he thought sharks were just, out of his life. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. Yeah. He's, um, he's working in a supermarket, and lo and behold, might be the same shark. It might be. Probably is. This is a chance for revenge, I'm not sure. <laughs> and then... Um, yeah, and, and that's it. Tsunami hits. I think there's two sharks because I think... Yeah, I think you're right. I there's one there's... that's patrolling the flooded car park, yeah. which is downstairs, and then there's one that's in the actual supermarket. Which is also flooded upstairs. Yes. Even though the car park isn't completely submerged. Correct. So there's a gap I between the two floods. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't thinking about it too much. It's pretty obvious. So there's a, there's a couple downstairs with another guy in a different car. I, yes, horny couple. I horny just, couple. Chris he, was, knows. he was in Home and Away. He I was the guy okay. I recognised, horny male man of that couple. Um, and then there's a guy who gets flipped upside down in his camper van, wakes up on the roof of his camper van and instantly breaks the window, which I think is possibly a bad call. You don't. You could just drown at that point. <laughs> he just took a complete gamble on there being air above him. Yes, yeah, so he's a supermarket, another supermarket employee. Yeah. And his girlfriend is uh, the goth girl. Yeah. Who is trapped upstairs, upstairs in the supermarket with her dad, who is a cop, who also tried to foil the robbery. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, we're making it sound very convoluted, and it, it really isn't. It's quite a simple story. It, it is simple, but they, I mean, you are introduced to sort of 10, 10 to 12 people yeah, all quite quickly. Works. Yeah, all very quickly. And yeah. it is quite hard to keep track of them, yeah, who's definitely. who and who's called what. And so you've got like the store manager, he's alive, the store security guard, yeah. uh, a man... A man <laughs> who I think straight away I realised who he was. Yeah. I don't know if oh, I got you want to talk about that twist now. Or... <laughs> yeah, go for it. So um, when when Julia McMahon's character comes in to do this robbery, he's he's there with a another man in a balaclava. Yeah. Um, and then when the tsunami hits, this man that we've never seen before is one of the survivors. Well, yeah, uh, at, at the start. <laughs> and then... We get later on in the film, it turns out he was the guy under the balaclava. Yeah. The, I, th- I think we all saw that sign posted. They call it a twist. It was pretty obvious. He, he met a grizzly end, but we'll come to that. Uh, and the horny couple have got a dog. Forgot about the dog. Oh, the dog. Yeah, of course. Um, um, I wrote so the dog's name down. Got like a handbag dog, hasn't she? Yeah. Uh, it, Billy. Bully, the dog was called. Right. Bully. Okay. I wrote Willy to start with, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was you? Bully. That's whatever floats your boat. Or shark. <laughs> So those those two and the dog were trapped in a car that was fully submerged under the water, but was completely a hundred percent watertight. Yes, because there was not even a leak. No, uh, no point was it there's threatened. No point. They, was it? they even opened a sunroof, didn't they? And they even and at one point the shark hits the window, cracks the window, and it still doesn't start leaking. Which, like you say, you have to leave your brain at the door for things like this. Not a British car, then, is it? No, absolutely. <laughs> As the only other people probably uh, it's worth mentioning so we already talked about Josh so yeah. it just so happens his who was his girlfriend in the uh, pre-credits scene yeah. she happens to wander into the supermarket yeah, she, as well she's there at the same time and it seems like this is the first she's time she's also been in home and away oh, okay <laughs> it seems like this is the first time they've seen each other since that fateful day when they <laughs> lost yeah, they, their other they friend they appear to have lost touch by a shark somehow um, and she's there with her new boyfriend isn't she? yeah so at this point they're all trapped on the top shelves of the rackings in the supermarket. The first person to die is a guy called Bob. So Bob's the security guard. Bob is the security guard. And they go, don't they, a couple of them split up and they go looking for exits. Yes. Uh, to the front of the store and then unsuccessfully. So Bob gets ripped apart yeah. by the shot. Ripped in half. Yeah. I think. Uh, he's more bits, isn't he? Bits yeah. and bobs. 
Nice. I'm giving you that. That was a great joke. Yeah, so he's not long for this film. There was a, a really good shot of him trying to get back on the railings and then he just floats away from his own arm. Yes. He's just hanging from the railing and his arm, he just floats away. It's brilliant. And, and I think that's where you can tell, you know, like I said, there's, there's more... It's, it's a step above your average shark disaster film. Yeah, it's... There's a bit more creativity and, and budget with the, some of these deaths. I'm trying to think of some of the cheaper cheaper ones that we've watched over the years. I, there was one where they were all stuck in a lifeguard tower that was cod awful, but I can't remember what it was called. Ghost Shark? Ghost Shark's a great film. <laughs> it was really terrible. <laughs> it's a terribly great film. It's, I can't remember what it's called. The one thing I have written down is the guy who plays the store manager... I thought was awful. He's called. There's a guy called Adrian Pang, and he, I thought his acting was atrocious. Even for a film like this, I thought it was just really, really bad. And he's been in a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, none of them were <laughs> great. No, but they weren't. I think no, you're probably no, right. I'm not saying that the rest of them are Oscar winners, but, but, but I think you're probably right. He he, he stuck he, out he in was, his. He stuck out like a sore film because he was just so hammy and over the top. He had a good death though. He had an incredible death. So one of the things they try to do is to escape is they try to get him up into the air conditioning, don't they? Yeah. And see if he can he can sort of crawl his way out. They kind of hoist him up, don't they, on a on a rope. Yeah. And he doesn't quite get in. <laughs> Half of him gets in. And then obviously when he's trying to climb into the air con, uh, the shark happens to leap up and again. Bites him in half. Bites him in half. <laughs> <laughs> There's something weird about laughing about people being bitten in half, but it is, it is funny. Anybody says, yeah, but it's, it's it is all played for us. So then, then they decide they need to turn the electricity off because there's a, a hanging cable that's hitting the water that's impeding them. Yeah. So really, quite randomly, they decide to dress a man up as a shopping trolley. I like this bit. <laughs> I loved this bit, but it is just imagine writing it. It's it's so ludicrous that so basically they cover this guy in. Cages. They go A team, don't they? They go all A. Yeah, they go MacGyver. On them, <laughs> so um, it's it's basically they try to make a human shark suit, Faraday cage type yeah. of shark suit. Yeah. So they cover him completely in the cage and then submerge him underwater with a really long snorkel made of piping. And he gets to the electricity box. Yes. But doesn't gets to the fuse box doesn't quite make it. Oh isn't? no! Of course, his his, his, <laughs> his, um, his snorkel isn't snorkel quite, quite long quite enough. Work. It's about three inches too short. I mean, it's close enough. He could have probably just put it back in. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly my thoughts at the time. Just take it out, lean forward, flick the breaker, put your snorkel back yeah. in. Yes, not that this film is noted for its realism, but the fact he started very slowly, bit by bit, deconstructing his own <laughs> shark cage suit. He decided the best thing to do would be to take the suit off, risk getting eaten by a shark, and also risk drowning when he could have reached it just by holding an arm out. But he, uh, he went out a hero. Oh, he died a hero, definitely. I didn't, didn't, Steven, Steven. Was that Steven? Yeah. I didn't write his name down. So he was the new boyfriend okay. of um, Tina, who was Josh's ex. Okay, I got you. Okay, that makes sense. He Go went on. down a hero. He did go down a hero. So then we go back into the car park and the dog... Well, the, By this point, the horny couple have got out of the car through the sunroof by... Yes. The shark getting distracted. What did this, what distracted the shark? The other guy making noise. Yeah, so the other chap down there, uh, Ryan, Ryan. Um, the ex supermarket employee. So he, yeah, he creates a distraction. And they get um, on the underside of another car. Correct. Okay. So it's his is his van. It's his van. Okay. So he's van. he's so moved to the sort of pile of pile of rubble and detritus that's at the end of the the car park. They go the other way to get on top of his van. He makes a lot of noise, distracts the shark. They they only make it to the upturned van because the horny guy lobs the dog. Sacrifices the dog to the shark. <laughs> Which is brilliant. Or Absolutely does he? Br- uh, well, or does he indeed. <laughs> that, that was a brilliant moment because the, the girl he was with didn't even notice straight away. No. Uh, when he just that throws the deal dog breaker for the her, shark. Though. Yeah, that was the deal breaker for her. That's when she realised he wasn't he was not wasn't. Bed. Yeah, he wasn't the he right guy for her, appear, but material. I laughed out loud at that point. Because he, he just lobbed that dog <laughs> into the water, brought himself enough time. It's, it was the nice sound effect as well of you just the dog going. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, I did enjoy that. A great scene. I, I, I don't mean I enjoyed it like that. I love animals. I, I love animals as well, but there's nothing more funny than the dog getting thrown at a shark. Apparently, was um, was Julian Mann in in was he in Home and Away at any point? No, 
Do you know who was married to Danny Minogue for a bit? She was in she Home and Away. She was in Home and Away. There you go. There you go. There's a connection to yeah. every Australian actor. There's a connection, I'm sure of it. It's the seven stages of Home and Away. It's at that point then that the store manager gets bitten in half. We jump forward a little bit there. Yes. that that Yeah, so that happens. He gets, um, like we say, chomped up when he's trying to get in the air conditioning. And um, this is where they start to formulate a bit of a plan, don't they? The guys in the supermarket. Yes. And they decide they need some bait. <laughs> Being in a supermarket, they're not too far away from the meat counter. Yeah. So Jamie, who's the goth girl, she volunteers. I can't re- remember how it comes up to be her, but anyway, she just goes for it. Yeah. Swims over to the meat counter, manages to sort of get inside. Is, is it a cage or she's behind the counter? I think she's behind the counter. But she gets there just before the shark. Yeah. The shark tries to come over the top and she bops it on the nose, doesn't <laughs> she? Which is what you're supposed to do if that's you get what, the yeah, shark. That's shark. what they always tell you. Punch yeah. a shark in the nose. Which turns it around. She grabs a load of meat. Gets back to the racking. Yeah. Awesome. That was a great scene. The next person to die was Horny Kyle, who was down in the... He fell in the water after trying to save the other guy who was crawling along some pipe. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then... then Is this the point where now they decide they need a human piece of bait? Yeah, so they... Yeah, the meat doesn't really work and they decide they need live bait to, to help. What they want to try and do... Is basically trying to catch the shark, like fish for it. Yeah. So they've got a, so they, they found can... a hook, don't they? Yeah. They wanted to put this meat on the hook, tie the other end of the rope to it. Is it round? But it's round a concrete pole. Round a concrete isn't pillar, it? yeah. So they want to tie. They want to tie the shark. Basically, limit the where the shark can go, so they can try and escape. The meat doesn't work. So this man who turns out to be the robber from the yeah, start. Yeah, I think it's at this point, isn't it? Yeah, he decides. Well, we need live bait. So he chucks another one of the supermarket employees in. Yeah. She manages to get out. Yeah. And Julian Mann's character kills. He doesn't just kill him. The he, guy. He runs him through. <laughs> runs him through with a big machete. And lobs him in. And lobs him in. And He's it works. the bait. They hook the shark. The shark's caught. The shark is on a tether. It's now tethered and can only swim around in one little section of the supermarket. Yes. So they're saved. Meanwhile, downstairs in the car park, Ryan, I don't know why it took him an hour and ten minutes, or however long this film goes on, but he, he starts banging on the the pipes. Yeah. Uh, makes a load of noise so the guys upstairs can hear him. So at so that point they realise that there's two levels of this supermarket where there's survivors. Yeah. So Josh and... You're much better with names than I am. <laughs> Josh and the goth, the goth girl, um, whose name I didn't catch, uh, they, they go back downstairs... Because she she wants to help rescue her boyfriend. They manage to make it to the stairs, get down into the car park, avoiding the shark that's up with them. And getting through the door. Yes. Even though the place was flooded. Yes. And the, but the staircase wasn't. Correct. It's a fortunate airlock. It's a very fortunate airlock. They wade into the water in the car park. Uh, and obviously the the Ryan and the, and the horny girl that are still down there, they let them know there's another shark down there. So they make it to the goth girl's dad's car so yeah. the cop's car Jamie her name is yes where they realise that there's a gun in the car because he's a cop but th- at this point the dog comes back to life <laughs> well, the dog didn't die he's not a zombie <laughs> no he didn't, he's not a zombie dog but zombie shark never that's dead another, in the first place. another film there's a genuinely this is a genuinely good scene when he's looking for that gun in the car and there's a shark coming for him it was I thought that was a really good scene it was tense it was you didn't know, you don't know if he's going to make it or not anything can happen in this sort of film and I, I genuinely loved that bit where he was looking for that gun in the car it was really clever really well made and then he finds it and blasts the fuck out of the shark's face he does he, he blows a shark's face off with a shotgun he goes yeah this is where Josh cool as fuck but stupid I've written that. <laughs> this is where Josh goes all Aussie Bruce Willis isn't it yeah it's, it's die hard this is where we're entering die hard moment <laughs> You know, and it's it's that old old trope as well. You actually do see the guns in that one where the where the cops pulling up into the supermarket, and then yeah, there they are do. in Act Three. Here we go. Still fully working, even though they've been underwater for the whole film. <laughs> well, again, I wouldn't <laughs> worry too much about that. You can't you can't uh, worry about that sort of thing. But there's a lot of leaving your brain at the door in this film. So Shark One is disposed. Shark of. One underground under car park. Shark is dead. Car park shark. Car park shark. Can't say that. Car shark. They say they make it back upstairs. Yep, they managed to get through the airlock again. But they don't go through the door this time. They go through the window above the door. Yeah, I mean, they couldn't find any exits, exits earlier. Yeah. But, again, <laughs> let's not worry about that. Who are we to question the 
design and layout of a, of a Australian yeah, flooded yeah, supermarket. The definitely fire doors definitely work. But as with as will happen with tsunamis, yeah, this is a really unfortunate time for this to happen. But there's an aftershock, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Just as it th- things are looking Just up. Just as you think, well, we've killed one shark, we've, we've tethered another shark, we're going to be saved. There's an aftershock. It frees the tethered shark. It, which frees the tethered shark. Just as they're all in the water, trying to get back from the uh, car park area. Nobody dies at this point. There's a really cool scene where he's, you think Josh is going to die, and then he does this really cool slow motion move and ends up with somehow where did he get the taser from I, I presume he picked it up in the from the car he must have got it from the cop's car yeah he must have it doesn't I, I didn't get that he just sort of suddenly had a taser yeah I'm assuming he got it in the car and he plays chicken with the shark yep yeah. he lets the shark come at him and he <laughs> and then he tasers the fuck out of its face yeah <laughs> which kills the second shark Uh, meanwhile, Julian Marne's character Brady, he puts a couple of these. He, does he switch? He switches the bear, the um, breakers back on. Yeah. Puts a couple of these electrical wires together, which yeah. somehow blows a huge hole in the wall. And, yeah. And that's their way to freedom. That's their way to freedom. They are out of the supermarket, and then there's a great line where they're all looking off in the distance, and one of them says, "What are we going to do now?" And the other one says, "Start over," which is a line from an apocalyptic film when, re- in realistically, they've just got to move a couple of miles inland. <laughs> Maybe he was talking about their careers. <laughs> It's like, it's, it's not, it's devastating for the area you're in, but two miles in land, nobody's even noticed. But that, it did make me laugh. And that, that was the final line from the film. Did you enjoy this film then? One more thing I need to say about this film before I tell you that. Yeah. Last week, you were talking about how the lady in the film took a lot more beating than the two males did. Yes. In this film, no females die at all. All right, yes. No, 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 no main characters. No, no, no main character. None of the there's female the fodder, characters in this. General yeah, fodder general in the fodder from the tsunami, but the, most of the men die. But there is not a single female casualty in this film. Which That's interesting. I found quite. I, I found it quite interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I fucking loved it. I'm not gonna lie. I loved every single minute of it. But I've got a real thing for this sort of film. You know, I have. It's B movies, shark movies, low budget teen getting ripped apart movies are brilliant for me it's stupid but it's, it knows it's stupid yes and that's fine i think it's this whole new shark genre of film is that it's we're making a shark film we know it's stupid go with it and you'll love it and i think that's and it's even in hollywood now you've got films like the meg coming out or have been out now and that was again it was the shark film that was ridiculously stupid but it was so much fun and i think that's what shark films need to be yeah this was um this was fine i i I'm not as high on it as you are. I mean, I enjoyed it. It was... I, I would say if, you, if you've got an hour and a half and you just want to turn your brain off, then yeah, go for it. Yeah. I mean, like I said earlier, none of the performances were great, but... None of them were particularly... Apart really from the store manager, that. none of them were particularly bad either. Yeah, I I mean, for me, it didn't quite have the charm that some of these shit, but know their shit yeah, films was, have. Yeah, I know what you mean. It, it's no Sharknado. But it was fine. Yeah, yeah it's... I, I, I agree. I'm not saying I'd, I'm stopping short of saying recommend it, go and see it. But <laughs> if, it was enjoy, it was an enjo- it was enjoyable. Into, if you're into it these was... sort of films, if you're into Sharknado and Ghost Shark and Mega Sharks and things like that, then you're going to enjoy it. Go out and watch it. Well, you've probably already seen it. And <laughs> yeah, and, and it had some pretty creative deaths in, it and you can't. No, there were some good effects. And can't some say fairer deaths. than that. No, I thought it was really. I really enjoyed it, and it was a hundred times better than Open House. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah, there's no comparison there. This was a lot more fun. This was this was fun to watch. I did I didn't I didn't end up being angry at the end of this film, put it that way. So yeah, um you've probably already seen it because that's what we recommend you do before you listen to the podcast, but recommend it to other people. Let us know what you think. Uh contact us on Twitter. Uh the Twitter is I can never remember the we Twitter. We really should again. learn the Twitter. <laughs> I'm gonna write it on a post it note or something. Uh so the Twitter's bots B O T S underscore podcast. And um, we've also got an email address, bottom of the stream at gmail.com. So contact us there, let us know what you thought, and we will uh, get into the discussion. Yeah, contact us with any any thoughts. We'd love to be um, reading some of your opinions out as well, a bit of feedback. Yeah, would be really good. definitely. We'll pretty much get back to you as well. I mean, if you tell us that this film's rubbish, we're going to come back at you and say, no, it's not. I'm all up for reading um, reading out, you know, what, what you guys think of these things as well. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely up for that. Um, yeah, so B-O-T-S underscore podcast for the Twitter and bottom of the stream at gmail.com is the email address. Um, subscribe to the podcast. 
rate and review the podcast. That'd be really helpful. Five star review would be nice. It's new and it needs reviews. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your enemies. Tell whoever you want. That's about it. Shall we pick next week's film? Yes. Let's go for it. So, I've got rid of the box. (laughs) There was was a short life. It it had a short life, the box. I found an app on my phone that can randomly... You type in a list of things and it randomly generates the one of them. Uh, we We said we had 11 last week. On the list. Yeah, I, I've added a few in the last few days. I don't think you've been doing the same. 27 on the list now. Okay. So this is going to, this app's going to randomly pick one for us. And then we will watch that and we will review it next week. So it has picked Await Further Instructions, which I can't say I've heard of. This is the synopsis for Await Further Instructions. A family's Christmas takes a strange turn when they awake to find themselves trapped inside and begin receiving mysterious instructions from their television. Christmas film. <laughs> a Christmas Excellent. film. Yeah, in uh, a Christmas film. So Excellent. between now and then, watch or wait further instructions and we will be back next week to discuss it and see what we thought. Brilliant. Brilliant. See you soon. Bye. Cheers. Cheers.